Hi, and welcome back. This time I will try and machine a few different materials, or more accurately, plywood, acrylic and aluminum. So let's not waste any more time and jump directly into the test. To test different types of speed and cutting depths, I made this small model. It needs both a pocket and a contour cut. Those are the two operations I expect to do most of the time. Because wood is so cheap, I duplicated the model a few times and machined all of them in one go. They all use the same end mills, speed and spindle RPM. However, the toolpath for each model has a different depth of cut. I then machined it and if possible, increased the feed rate. I started with a speed of 300mm per minute and increased the speed by 100mm per minute for each iteration. For the end mill, I used a 4mm 2 flute straight cut end mill. I specifically chose one with straight flutes. I have heard that spiral flutes help to remove chips by applying an upwards force. This force is also applied to the material, which could mean that it negatively affects the top edge. In the end it didn't look particularly good, so I think it doesn't make a big difference. Correct me in the comments if I am wrong about that. The piece of plywood I use is pretty thick, and I could have made use of that height. I decided not to because that would needlessly increase machining time, and it comes with the benefit of keeping the models in a well aligned grid, meaning I can never mix them up. If we take a look at a different speed, there does seem to be a difference. Strangely, the quality seems to improve with a higher feed rate. I always use the same speed RPM of 6000, so by increasing the cutting speed, we increase the amount the end mill flutes cut per rotation. This at first seems strange to me. In my mind, increasing the speed would decrease the quality, but it seems I was wrong about that. Looking at the different cutting depths, we can again see a difference. Obviously, a smaller depth of cut decreases the force on the end mill, thereby increasing the quality. I am personally willing to take a hit on the service finish if I can take advantage of the time savings. By increasing the feed rate from 300mm per minute to 800mm per minute, I was able to reduce the time from 5 minutes and 40 seconds to 3 minutes and 55 seconds. And increasing the depth of cut from 1mm to 2.5mm, I was able to decrease that time to under 2 minutes. Now obviously these time savings are not really that meaningful, since I started with such a slow feed rate but it is substantially faster in comparison to the settings for my last operation. I am pretty sure I could go a bit faster, but I didn't bother to test different settings since this is already fast enough for me. Let's move on to acrylic. I didn't have any thick pieces of acrylic on hand, so I had to settle with these 2mm thick sheets. Because it is so thin, I couldn't use the same model as before. I could have reduced the thickness, but instead I made my channel logo. Acrylic poses some different challenges in comparison to wood. Mainly the fact that it can melt and that it is substantially more brittle. To avoid melting it, I used a 2mm single flute spiral end mill. I used such a small end mill diameter because of the finer details in my model. Also, I have heard that such a single flute end mill should help to make it easier to prevent rubbing. However, I could be totally wrong, so take all of this with a grain of salt. For machining speed, I used a feed rate of 300mm per minute with a depth of 1mm. Going more aggressive should be possible with a bigger and sturdier end mill, but these smaller end mills are quite fragile. During the machining process, I played around with the spindle RPM. I started with 7000 rotations per minute and settled on 8000 to 8500 RPM. After the operation was finished, the part was not completely free. This is because I set the z-axis zero point just a bit too high. However, the remaining material was so thin that I could pull it out with just a bit of force. The result is pretty impressive in my opinion. The edges are sharp and the surface finish is pretty smooth. There are some marks on the bottom of the pocket cut, but you can't actually feel them. So it is pretty smooth. This could have been a pretty much perfect result if not for the little cracks at the edges where I had to break away the remaining material. I didn't test anything different since I won't work with this material all that often. And I don't want to waste any more material. 
Acrylic has this habit of sticking to everything, so it is a bit annoying to work with. One of the cool characteristics of acrylic is what happens when it is lit from below. The matte edges reflect the light, causing everything we just machined to light up, which can be quite handy for something like a sign. Next up is aluminum. Now the key knight among you might notice a difference in the wave spot. This is because in my timeline I actually machined aluminum before acrylic. I just wanted to mention that. For the material I used this 6mm thick piece of aluminum. I went back to using the same model as before and started out with a speed of 300mm per minute, a spindle speed of 6000 rpm and a cutting depth of 0.5mm. For the end mill I used this 3.175mm single flute end mill. This is pretty much the same as before, just a bit bigger. Now let's run this program and see the results. Yeah, this is really not great. I really thought I could machine aluminum on this machine. And this is a result I am not happy with. The edges are far from perfect, the surface finish is pretty bad, especially on the counter cut, and the bottom of the pocket cut is pretty rough. The whole machine also vibrated quite a lot. But then I took a closer look at the end mill. By the way, these are two of the same end mill, just from two different manufacturers which is why one is so much shinier. I noticed two things. For one, there is some discoloration on the bit. This indicates to me that the tool is rubbing, as the cutting edge goes round for the next cut. This means that I either need to decrease my cutting speed or increase the RPM. I chose the second option and increased the RPM to 8000. The second thing that can be seen is the fact that the pointy end of the end mill is missing. Obviously, a broken end mill delivers undesirable results. There could be a few causes for this being broken off. Part of the reason was probably the issue with rubbing I mentioned earlier. But what I think ultimately killed it is the step that the router took between each contour pass. Here the tool goes straight into the material. This is a problem with this end mill because it doesn't have cutting edges on the bottom, like other small end mills. It only has them on the side, meaning it can only cut sideways and not downwards. This isn't really a problem for acrylic because it is so much softer than aluminum. So to prevent any issues I turned on the spiral cutting option on the contour cut. In hindsight I should have made the slope much less steep to decrease the stress on the end mill. Now let's do this again. I have to say this is so much better. The edges are sharp, the dimensions are accurate and the surface finish is leagues ahead of my last try. I still want to remove it from a stock material so I can look at it without having to remove around a large aluminum plate. So I made another contour cut to free it from its aluminum prism. And again the end mill broke. Nee. This time the culprits are the tabs that I used. 
They are necessary to hold the model in place during the machining process, but they were also rectangular. You can probably see where I'm going with this. Each time the anvil comes around, it lifts off the material and then drives straight into it. Again, same issue as before. So if you're using end mills that can go straight into the material, use triangle taps. Try making the slope as shallow as possible to decrease the stress on the end mill. Also remember to deactivate the lead in and lead out transition. If they are still active, the end mill will try and go sideways into the material at the end of the tool path. I was lucky and the end mill didn't break. After another try, I could finally remove the part. With the remains of the tabs removed, we can see that the outer edges don't have the shiny finish that I had expected from the look before. I mostly think that is because, again, the end mill tip broke. This and the vibration it causes are definitely not good for surface finish. But overall, I am very happy to see that I can actually machine aluminum. There are some marks on the bottom of the pocket cut, but just like with acrylic, I can barely feel them. I am also happy to report that the cyclone separator I built in a previous video also works well with aluminum chips. I could have done further tuning to maybe get a slightly better result or increase the speed. I didn't do that for two reasons. For one, aluminum is expensive and I want to use as little as possible. I also need the material for when I eventually rebuild the machine with aluminum parts. But I also broke a bunch of admirals during these two tests and my supply is pretty limited. I hope you might have found this video helpful. I'm definitely not a machining expert so I probably did a few things wrong. If you have any recommendations on how I could improve, leave a comment down below and also subscribe for future videos. See you in the future.